So ChatGPT is the only thing that the entire tech community is talking about at the moment. And we have all seen what it can do and what possibly and what are the possibilities around that. Using the product is okay. Writing better prompt to get the best answer is okay. But the real fun lies in knowing the internals of it. So to understand how ChatGPT works and understand some really critical details around it, we have with us Ramshree. The guy who has been doing generative AI before it was cool. Trust me, I've been personally following him for three years now. And when I got this idea of, of doing a podcast on ChatGPT, the only name I could think of what was his. Uh, just to tell you a bit about Ramshri, he is a, uh, he is the founder of three AI companies. Quite, quite interesting companies. Uh, first uh, is basically Super Meme AI, which generates meme from text. Brilliant product. I use that quite often now. Second is uh, basically question which generates quiz from text and third is super translate AI which generates English subtitles for any video. Trust me, check those things out. But, but, but once we wrap our conversation after that, go ahead and check out his stuff. Uh, up until then, we would have a very nice detailed deep dive on chat GPT. So uh, let's jump right into it. Straight away hit the bullseye. Ramshri, first question to you. What is chat GPT and how it works? Thanks a lot, Arpit, for having me here. First of all, I've been following your content for quite some time. I took your course as well. So amazing, glad to be here. And uh, let's dive right into it, chat GPT. So first of all, it's a instruction fine-tuned language model. Let's simplify all those terms. Language model in its simplicity is next word or next token predictor. Mm. Why I'm talking about tokens is uh, for example, let's take a word uh, like Chisa. Uh, KFC introduced, reintroduced Chisa very recently. Mm. But whenever we hear the term, we automatically divide it into two tokens, let's say chicken and pizza combined, mm. right? Mm. So we as humans process in tokens already. Mm. It's not like we have a vocabulary. Because even when you see Ram Sri, you automatically think about Ram plus Sri. Yeah. So we internally we process not words but subwords for simplicity let's call subwords as tokens mm -hmm. and in its simplicity chat gpt will just uh, is just a fill in the blank kind of extender but the blank is at the very end where you just keep writing words or subwords and extending it now the magic happens when you just train in that scenario on internet level text almost billions of words that are available on the internet mm -hmm. when you train a large uh, AI model to just do the next word prediction mm -hmm. that's when the magic happens because automatically after training right out of the box it can do several things like translation or copywriting and several other things mm -hmm. now there's only one more add-on to it which is it is instruction fine-tuned what that means is now you have this language model mm. and you have uh, human labelers who create some instruction and what is the ideal output like a prompt input prompt and some ideal output and you train on top of that i think um, we can delve a little bit deeper into chat gpt's training procedure mm. Uh, but uh, let's delve into that. As let's 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 start with that. Let's start with that other thing because I was always curious. That is this an artificial intelligence which is which is basically we which is basically very generally trained to do stuff or are there any specific? So you you spoke about how it is about uh, when you are specifying the prompt and you are basically training it according to that, which means that let's say we can pass into chat GPT, hey, please write me a poem on a, on a certain thing. So is this a different, like it would be part of the same model, but is there a bunch of basically micro models, which then are collated into this one gigantic general intelligence that we're talking about? Hmm. Okay. Let's take a step back to hmm. understand what exactly chat GPT, what this is doing. Hmm. For example, assume training language model is like training a general purpose athlete. Hmm. There's an athlete who, who no, goes to the gym every day and they have been trained on that. Uh, so they are very well uh, yeah. built and they know all their agility and moves. Now you can take them and in 
you know, six months or one year, train them to be a cricketer, train them to be a footballer mm -hmm. or whatever, rugby player, etc. Right? Uh, exactly language model is like that uh, pro athlete, almost 95% of your juice is already extracted in training the language model itself. By instruction fine tuning, it's almost like you bring a professional athlete who has been trained. Now you ask them to, you know, hit the ball such that it doesn't get into fielder's hands between these things. So it's just fine tuning, just training them on top of that. It's almost like that. Where that's, language that's, that's a very interesting analogy there. So it's like, like I'll spend some time giving it data in order to write poems. I would give it data or, or like uh, first I train a, 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 an extremely general purpose language model on top of which basically on top of which basically whichever use case I would want to support. I would be providing those those really specifics to that particular model. Right. Okay. So this means that we can create a very general purpose language model and we can actually build a lot of custom use cases on yeah. top of it and i guess this is exactly what light uh, i guess this is exactly what this basically white labeling thing would be where you yeah. can like where we have all heard that uh, uh, microsoft will be giving a white label chat gpt solution which means that a, a really basic language model would be provided a really general purpose language model and then companies can train it on their own data and their own use cases on top of it Yes, yes, absolutely. So I think uh, let's lay out ChatGPT even clearer. There are three steps essentially. Mm. And when you take this analogy, mm. there is an athlete uh, mm. and in even let's get even deeper to understand, which is yeah, let's, let's take real example. Mm. Uh, there is this movie called as Million Dollar Arm mm. uh, in 2014. So basically the story is this. Uh, they want US people wanted baseball players. Mm. But there was shortage of baseball players and there are several other parameters where you need to train from scratch, etc. Mm. So what they did was they came to India. This is a real story made into a movie. They came to India. They found people mostly like cricketers, gully cricketers, etc. And they kept a match uh, where who can throw the fastest and with accuracy, speed and accuracy. Mm. So someone who can consistently throw baseball at uh, 90 miles to 100 miles per hour. They took two folks mm. who are extremely good at that. Prior to that, they never played baseball. Mm. They took those folks, trained them for two years mm. uh, and then they got into the proper baseball league and you know stayed there and uh, had some success uh, where uh, you know Pittsburgh or some, uh, someone took them etc. Mm. Similarly, uh, assume three steps here mm. first they never played baseball so as soon as the tournament was announced mm. they would do one thing which is see how baseball is played online through videos mm. and try to simulate some uh, games with their friends mm. locally so that uh, they kind of acclimatize themselves it's almost mm. like warm up mm. Consider this, that as a first stage of chat mm -hmm. where you are just giving some input output samples mm -hmm. and just trainings and doing some warm up kind of. Mm -hmm. It's called as supervised fine tuning, mm -hmm. but in simplicity, a cricketer is acclimatizing themselves to baseball and there is no active feedback. Then see the second stage. Mm -hmm. The second stage is actually about coach. Mm. baseball coach mm. what can a baseball coach do if you bring 10 players to him he can sort them by ranking yeah. he, number seven is the top player etc mm. or if you just bring one player mm. he can rank them from one to ten on a scale of one to ten how yeah. good he is yeah so you have the baseball player a cricket player who want who has some knowledge of baseball you have the coach mm. now in order for this player to be a real pro baseball player, you just train with coach and player in tandem, iterating continuously. Mm. So they'll play. He'll play one game. Then you'll tell no, no, no. You should not hit like this. 
hit mm. uh, at this rate you should be you should go to the next base before the ball comes in so continuously you do back and forth back and forth training between mm. the coach and player coach and player at the end of let's say 2 years that player will transform into a professional, professional player, player. Yeah. exactly three pieces mm. one is warm up phase of chat gpt where you are doing some fine tuning then there is a reward model which is the coach mm. whatever chat gpt generates it can flag whether it is good or not or mm. rank them on scale 1 to 10 now you attach this reward model that is coach mm. with chat gpt generation and mm. continuously whatever you generate will be ranked and if it's not ranked well you will adjust the parameters and you continuously loop that uh, who will adjust these parameters in case of real chat gpt Hmm. who addresses like who tells chat gpt or the or the model that hey this is good this is bad this is right this is wrong yeah so you have two models like right? one is the reward model which is the coach hmm. and then there is a player hmm. so for player let's say you give some write a poem about this hmm. then the poem will be written that will be ranked by the coach reward model or coach okay got it now let's say if it gets rank of uh, 2 which is bad on a scale of 1 to 10 10 is good 2 is bad now you go and do gradient descent which is a which is okay ascent. gradient descent okay now gradient again. descent ah. happens hmm. Hmm. and you adjust the parameters next hmm. time given an input you will try to score 3 or 4 hmm. then you slowly do gradient descent that's what is happening and uh, basically it's gradient descent but in terms you are doing reinforcement learning where there is an agent and there is a player mm. there is a reward associated so reinforcement learning with human feedback by human so feedback. the ranking that you are talking about is this yeah. us the users giving the ranking with this a thumbs up thumbs down and all those or how uh not really so the ranking is automatically generated by the reward model okay that is the coach okay so you got it you, you train the coach as well right you ah, the that's a, ha, ha. so you, let's say if i talk about uh, poems then i would be training my reward model on let's say shakespeare and 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 all of this literature and i can see what my ai is generating and this reward model would be giving ranking to the output which is generated and then that becomes the reinforcement kind of stuff where your ai was like no 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 this is bad change this or basically instead of actually pinpointing you just say okay basically uh, basically this is not good and then it does another iteration and then it figures out ki hey did i score more or less if it scored more then it is basically fine tuning into it uh, the way you approach the optimalities using gradient descent right right so think about it like this it's almost even general purpose coach yeah. which yeah. is not exactly baseball that coach is trained such that no matter which game you bring hmm. he or she can rank them So okay. here, okay. you are not okay. exactly training training for poems. Mm. You one instruction will be poems. One mm. instruction will be copywriting. Mm. One instruction will be something else. Mm. It's a general purpose reward model that almost ranks you based on how accurate the output is, how mm. humanly sounding. Secondly, uh, you know it shouldn't harm people. If you ask how do I prepare a bomb, it should not give you instructions on preparing a bomb. Mm. because it should take care into safety as well mm. so it's almost like you teach a player to mm. maximize the reward that is they should win the game mm. but it's not about hurting the other player or uh, you know violating the rules of the game even you continuously train them Got to it. the reward is maximizing and winning that's mm. it mm. you should not hurt you should not violate the boundary conditions In this is the responsible case, AI thing that we always yeah, yeah. hear, hear and about. And in ChatGPT training, that is the biggest part, which mm. is for questions, the output should not have bias. Mm. It should not harm the user. For example, if you are saying I am feeling suicidal, and if the response is like go ahead and commit suicide, then <laughs> that destroys the purpose of it, right? And a general purpose language model will do that. Mm. Yeah, general purpose language power. model will 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 tell you ways to commit suicide. Yes, mm. and here you have to take care of safety, bias, and also hallucinations. By that I mean, if you ask something like when was Elon Musk born, 
it should not generate 2050 2070 it should not hallucinate things that it doesn't know mm-hmm. so right. you even reduce halluc- hallucinations so, reduce bias reduce safety uh, risks etc all these things. so i can relate hallucination to basically factual correctness yes you can assume right. it for factual right. correctness yeah nice quite interesting like i i like when you said that i'm gradient descent i immediately went back to my college days when i implemented gradient descent never thought it would be using it in this big of a substantial way that it is going to be used super at the end of the day every ai is just yeah. gradient descent adjusting parameters how you adjust those parameters the last function could differ uh, based on reinforcement learning or any mm-hmm. other way etc mm-hmm. yeah so the large language model when we say we are training it so then and then it will be some kind of neural network having yeah. let's say multiple layers right we always hear this term that uh, chat gpt has like let's say x billion parameters like let's say basically 30 billion 40 billion what what exactly are these parameters that they say hey we are training it on these many got it. okay so first uh, first of all all the neural networks are such that we have these nodes or neurons artificial neuron is basically that takes several weighted inputs and mm-hmm. generates an output mm-hmm. for example think about i have only one neuron which should say whether i carry an umbrella today or not mm-hmm. i am taking to account several factors mm-hmm. did it rain yesterday uh, is it cloudy today is it actually rainy season or summer season let's say i have four or five parameters okay and today is my decision whether to carry or not one or zero is dependent on let's say w1 weight one into sunny that corresponding thing sunny winter rainy and all yeah. that yeah mm-hmm. and what happens is that it's it's a linear function to calculate mm-hmm. but the output is not um, output is guarded by a sigmoid or some non linear function you get this value then you run it through a non linear function and that then get that binary 1 or 0 because mm-hmm. what happens is that if everything is linear no matter how big the network is you can combine into one single calculation yes yes so that should not happen there should be some magic just like we humans right what happens exactly whenever you ask or do any any task is there are billions of neurons almost 80 mm-hmm. billion mm-hmm. Uh, neurons or something mm-hmm. like that on humans mm-hmm. and several things activate mm. and based on previous level activations some things activate in the next level again some things activate at the end to get let's say one output there is a layer of activations or deactivations that happen similarly whether we are doing this uh, large language model training or anything it's all a sequence of activations some getting activated and some not getting activated so simply put whenever they say chat gpt has these many billion parameters it is there there are 40 decision points and mm-hmm. each decision point will be connected to it let's say its previous layer okay and a weighted factor then there is a non linear function on top mm-hmm. of that which outputs a binary 1 or 0 okay so uh, just uh, i'm basically like jabo really sorry to cut you off on that so uh, uh, basically when you said that basically 40 decision points it's like the 40 inputs to the neuron which is uh, and the output is a binary one right so the 40 decision point that you're ta- that you're talking about is the 40 input to my first level of the neural network for each neuron is it not really so no. what i meant to say is that um assume that there are several layers in the mm-hmm. first layer you give your input yeah. um let's just take let's say you have 100 numbers to give mm-hmm. as input mm-hmm. that is you give 100 numbers as input but in the second layer i might connect those 100 numbers to 10000 other neurons yeah yeah and each neuron will have some weighted combination with the initial 100 numbers yes so suddenly you are expanding your 100 input to 10000 then you can expand it to 100 okay. no, k mm-hmm. again you can compress that in the last layers from 100 k to 10 k to let's say five decision points something like that so then at each layer basically it is all about finding how many nodes or how many neurons do you want what kind of weights would you put 
and but then this also like then is this also dynamically adjusted or are these basically static configurations so the number of parameters and the architecture is fixed hmm. it's more of an art than science in some ways <laughs> so you kind of fix these 40 let's say 40 billion neurons hmm. Hmm. when i mean 40 billion what happens is that layer 1 you'll have 100 layer hmm. 2 you'll have 10000 layer 3 100 k 100 uh, 100,000 let's mm. say you add all this 100 plus 100k plus 100 all this this comes out to whatever 40 billion okay. neurons etc mm. now those networks are fixed but mm. those weights weights, those weights would change weights, weights would depend on weights. what we are giving as an input what we are training it on yeah gradient descent adjusts those weights mm. continuously mm. as you train so when you are talking about this non-linear activation function per se uh, it is more like if I write a normal procedural code, I can just use if my basic condition one and and condition two and and condition three. This non-linear function just says, ki, "Hey, don't just do this. Add some more stress to that." Like, like you are just making it. I would not want to use the term random, but but not so predictable. Like you may have to just basically cross a threshold for like for it to be true. Right. 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 Exactly. And I'll add one more bit which ah. will make it clear yeah. for what what these language models are. Hmm. Now you have this big neural network. Hmm. At the end, assume just you have your vocabulary. For example, you as Arpit would know, uh, average human would know 20,000 words. And in your final output, you have only 20,000 words or tokens. That's it. Hmm. What I'm trying to say is that even if uh, I say Hi, my name is Ramsri and I ask you what is my name? Ramsri is not in your vocabulary. But what's so in your never vocabulary? never spit it out? No, no, no. It will spit it out in two shots, which is since Ramsri is not in your vocabulary, there is a sub word called as Ram in your vocabulary. First you will generate that. Now you will append it like this. Hi, my name is Ramsri. What is my name? You generated Ram first. That will get appended. Then the question will be like, hi, my name is Ramsri. What is my name? Ram. Then there is a blank waiting. You will generate Sri. Although Ramsri is not in your vocabulary, mm. you will get the sub word is in your vocabulary. So here you are assuming that Ram and Sri independently are part of your vocabulary. Yes. And okay. like that, every word on the planet Earth is part of the vocabulary. Be because that can be subdivided into your fixed vocabulary. I was I was reading about uh, basically byte pair encoding. Yeah. Like uh, it's 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 about how you basically tokenize on the subword uh, basis. Is it is it basically kind of that? Yeah. Let me explain with a very simple example. Yeah. Ramsri, you would understand. Yeah. Let's say you suddenly meet a Chinese speaker. Mm. They said their name is uh, Shane Wong, something mm. like that. Mm. Okay. Then they'll ask you, what is my name? Mm. How will you remember it? <laughs> you will associate with the closest thing that you know. If you do not know how X, A and join, you'll simply do this like, I have X, I have A, I have A, N. So you will generate it letter by letter. Mm. That is almost like byte pair encoding. Byte pair encoding. Yeah. Whereas yeah. if you have some association like Ramsri, you can generate with two tokens because two you tokens. know Ram like, is in your yeah. vocabulary. Yeah. And if something is not in your vocabulary, what you do is, Mm. All the byte pairs are like 2 power 5, 5 or 6, mm. something like that, right? You have Unicode. Mm. Yeah. So you will you'll generate almost like letter by letter. So anything mm. can be generated. It's just how complex it is for you. Yeah. If you don't have in your vocabulary, you have the basic form, which is a byte in your vocabulary that is there for you. You will generate all these things. That's why what happens is if you use English in GPT-3 or chat GPT, the generation is faster, the cost is also lower. If you use Telugu or Hindi or anything, what happens is that to generate one letter, it has to put together six bytes six together, bytes, byte yeah, pair. Yeah, yeah. And each byte pair will be four, you know, it will have four bytes stored underneath something mm, like that. Mm, so mm. it's almost 15 to 18x slower as well as cost clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. God, this is interesting because I like now 
it really looks like something which is so foundational because byte pair encoding uh, uh especially when it is used in sense of nlp i like uh, about a month back or a month month and a half back i did a video on it around how basically zomato improved their search and that's where i actually stumbled upon this this very algorithm i'm like this is such a simple statistical way to do tokenization so what their use case was that if let's say basically palak paneer is used very frequently then palak paneer is a token rather than p a l a k so they leverage that in order to make their tokenization supervised instead of just splitting it at spaces or instead of just using one character as a token so exactly so if you want to really hit big hmm. you should train your own tokenizer then hmm. you will form your own vocabulary and at the end of the day hmm. everything these language models are generating is probability of what's the best token now out of the 20000 or 50000 vocabulary that you have it's as simple as that hmm. that means for example i say hi my name is and if you don't see me then in your probability john uh, let's say mary ramsri everything is equivalently probable yeah. but just when you see me you know that i am man and i am indian mm-hmm. then all the john all those will go to let's say 0.001 probability uh-huh. ramsri arpit sham all these things probabilities will increase and this is so easy yeah like hmm, go on go on this beautiful and let's say if you always pick the most probable token you will always generate hi my name is ram uh, let's say most popular indian name ram mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. like that you will just keep generating hi my name is ram hi name is ram mm-hmm. all the time mm-hmm. but let's say i give you one more constraint think of 10 possible names mm-hmm. and randomly pick one mm-hmm. then you will say hi my name is instead of ram let's say sham mm-hmm. you pick that then again next to continue the sentence i will tell another constraint think of 10 possible words to fill fill mm-hmm. fill in the blank here mm-hmm. but pick randomly from that mm-hmm. that's what is called as top k sampling where people yeah. are adjusting the temperature etc mm. that's where you will get creativity but the creativity is not random it is constrained randomness because it's constrained on the probability that from the top 10 probable words you pick one then again from the next top 10 probable words you pick one then if you try to extend that what happens is that what ai generates is not random Mm-hmm. it is almost equivalent to a human level language Got that's it. where magic i was happens. i was about to ask you on this exploration versus exploitation because when we always try to pick the best match because now that we we have we have established that what chat what chat gpt is and then you have a sentence you just want to find the next word that basically fits in and then the next word that fits in So, given this, if you always pick the best, you would always keep on generating the same thing again and again. So, but we would want to generate something that seems random enough. That hey, yes. basically show me another one, show me another one. So, you would have to take different paths every time. So, uh, is this literally just a random pick out of that, or is it something which is a thoughtful decision, something like a PID controller? Correct. so essentially this is called as decoding strategy okay. and any text generation algorithm be it chat gpt gpt3 there and decoding strategy by itself is a research field where there are several decoding strategies mm-hmm. for example if you always pick the best word mm-hmm. that's one strategy mm-hmm. but let's think about two more possibilities you cut off the probability mm-hmm. at some point because 20000 vocabulary has some probability let's say you say i'll only generate from uh, 0.95 probable words only the top 5% mm. that's one okay then Got there it. is another strategy forget probabilities mm. get the top 10 words or k words so that's top k probability mm. and from that you will do something called as uh, beam search etc what i mean by that is your probability of next word mm. is not independent if you want to generate five words the cumulative probability of five words is not dictated by the probability of the first words mm. 
because you need in order if you are fixed on generating five words you should generate all possible combinations of five words from your token vocabulary mm. then pick the path that has the maximum probability which is multiplication of each probability yeah yeah so that's where you know algorithms come it's in like a and b and c and d which is why you said multiplication of probability so that yes. then you make that right call because now that all of this exists now you tell me which one would uh, sit here exactly exactly nice 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 so one thing that you know always boggles my mind whenever i uh, go deeper into this it's like like we all take chat gpt for granted into spitting out almost correct answer every time right to be yeah. honest it's like basically finding needle in a haystack which mm. means that it is trained on the internet like almost the entire internet is trained on now for you like when you ask chat gpt a question that hey please tell me who is the first president of india for example i for it it would there, there would be hundreds of articles where let's say 20% might have some really different answer 80% might have the correct answer so let's we'll we will dive into the correctness later but like how does it like like it needs to find that this is what i'm looking at and it needs to understand that hey this is this exactly is the pinpointed information that is asked in this particular prompt how 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 is this even achieved hmm. because there is so much of ambiguity to solve yeah, yeah. absolutely i mean it almost feels magical hmm. but what exactly is happening is the moment president india etc comes you are from 20000 or 50000 tokens you are reshuffling them to the point that whatever jawaharlal nehru or anything like mm. all those things are uh, at the very top probable tokens oh, that now okay. you just need to pick it's almost like you know you have our your probabilities are such reshuffled once it sees the initial text just like initial president text. of india because that's the because now that has become the context yes so because of which now it can very easily trimmed or rather not really it needs to trim down but automatically the probability of tokens like basically dr rajinder prasad yes. uh, jawaharlal nehru and, and 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 all of these politicians would basically come up yes okay yes. got it got it so this is but which means that if i put and obviously it's true for almost everything that we train on that if the input data is incorrect it would be trained on something random and so we cannot guarantee factual correctness of it yeah. so let's say if i feed it article which says arpit is the first president of india it would spit out arpit is the first president of india <laughs> yes so i think what most people do and i think there is a new paradigm that is emerging is you get your context on the fly random uh, not randomly on the fly from reliable sources hmm. by that i mean if i ask who is the first president of india you would go and do a vector search in your database hmm. to fetch the top k articles those are reliable ground truth articles hmm. now you will ask your chat gpt such that given these five articles and content answer this question what is the first mm-hmm. president of india why that helps is simply let's say i have my website question if i ask what is the refund policy to chat gpt it has no clue so it will spit the average answer let's say 21 days is the refund policy thinking that mine is a texas if i give that information but as soon as when someone asks what is the refund policy let's say i go to my faq database just fetch the most top relevant articles and give that as context then chat gpt knows okay 14 days is and you don't even need to word it at refund policy you can say yes. 14 days is the maximum when uh, cash back could be awarded something like that mm-hmm. and chat gpt has that context so it will respond back this is so good because now the more we are discussing this now i am realizing that how this can be shipped as a white label solution because now yeah it's, it's so god is so interesting <laughs> because i am just thinking of all sorts of possibilities over here and 
like and that's exactly basically one of the prompt that we give to chat gpt is hey here's the text please summarize it for me yes. that becomes the context this becomes the action that we wanted to do so it just tries to do that on basis of the of the general learning that it has from a generic model right right and now with this i can actually like if i talk about a search engine like let's say bing or google they already know for a query these are like these are the reliable sources because they anyway use it for the relevance if yes. like day in and day out for example stack overflow answer in which there is an uptake upward accepted answer or something like that that is the correct answer so it can just pick those things and pick the best out now that becomes the context as you said Yes. You just say, "Okay, find me the answer for this." So it's like, and now when people like now that when we ask ChatGPT that, "Hey, please prepare a ten-day itinerary, itinerary for me, or five-day itinerary for me," from given that Bing already is a search engine, it knows the reliable sources, it gets that, and now instead of throwing the links at you, that yes. becomes the context. We are basically doing pinpointing. if into the text of it at finding the actual answer rather than just spitting out the links yes here's a little catch ah, please, 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 please. Ah. it's a generative answer <laughs> if your extractive yeah. answer is basically you take a span from the exact text ah. and stop got it it yeah, is a generative right. answer in the sense that hmm. it will generate plausibly to the point that hey sorry you can even ask a question like can i get a refund after hmm. 21 days hmm. your about text says your refund policy is 14 days maximum mm. it will even generate smartly that hey our average refund day policy is 14 days you have exceeded by 7 days so unfortunately we cannot refund you at this point of time it is a generative answer because it is generative instead of uh, as you as you basically very right and, and i should have added that but that instead of just finding the span of the answer it is generating but given that it no be, no uh, yeah basically uh basically given that it was trained on my data set it knows those tokens because now we can talk in terms of tokens it knows the tokens this is the most likely token that would come over here and then can be generative as part of it so which is why it feels human like yes because it is generative but from the reliable sources it is getting that hey from this i want to generate an answer rather than generating answer from the entire internet void space that i have i'll pick this thing and from this i'd want to generate an answer exactly and one more thing is actually chat gpt has memory in the mm. sense that you asked it to prepare an itinerary mm. it prepared an itinerary mm. now you can ask a question such that in the previous itinerary change the second point to make it more child friendly mm. then it will go and change only the second point to make it child friendly what then that becomes the context right that is yeah. part of the context now when someone is having a chat you need to maintain a running context yeah so that's that's another embedded thing let's say from technical standpoint the chat gpt takes care of god this is so interesting now i understand why the entire world is behind this because like <laughs> this is like when the entire like what i feel is when the entire tech ecosystem was behind cryptos and blockchains and web 3s and what not folks at open ai just killed it yeah. <laughs> they just they just took our money and ran away with it and hey we are just going in this void space no one is there to basically there is no one who can actually disturb us we are just fully focused on getting things out and just they have uh, officially <laughs> announced that web3 is actually ai generated content coexisting with human generated content like they have not officially made that statement but that's the truth yeah. that we are seeing <laughs> yeah yeah where entire world was thinking web3 is around basically blockchains and meta masks and cryptos and what not they said no 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 that's not web3 web3 is adding intelligence to web <laughs> and ai coexisting with humans yeah, all yeah, in yeah, yeah. yeah. now it's so much part of and yeah there are tons of improvements 100% uh like so 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 much to improve but like really i'm so now pumped to just have my own version of chat gpt trained on my content it would yeah. spit out so many things because now the best part is like for me i want to have answer to something i just want to first make search on things that i personally use and i have personally created it would just i i think i think someone created this basically geeta gpt also yeah, yeah. right 
बाइबल की पेटी गीता जी पेटी कुरान जी पेटी लाइक चलो आई 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 बी आई बी डाइविंग डीप इनटू दिस आई वांट टू ट्रेन माय ओन चैट जीपीटी नाउ अच्छा अच्छा बाय द वे एनी रेफरेंस फॉर दैट हाउ हाउ कैन वी ट्रेन आवर ओन ओन जीपीटी ऑन जीपीटी 3 देयर इज एन ऑफिशियल ट्यूटोरियल बाय ओपन ए इटसेल्फ हाउ टू ट्रेन अ चैट बॉट ऑन योर ओन डेटा सेकंडली देयर आर 10 टू 20 स्टार्टअप्स दैट केम अप वेयर यू कैन गिव योर वेबसाइट लिंक and they'll give a chat interface things like that uh, all is like entrepreneurs <laughs> oh god yeah. okay fine I'll, i'll go through that and and i'll definitely link it in the description down below for everyone else to take a look at but i'm so pumped about this because now this is what was the missing piece is 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 what it feels like because i still remember 2015 2016 was the time where basically chat ops was a thing Right. Everyone wanted to do chat ops. Everyone wanted to automate their infrastructure through a chatbot. But when we were writing prompts in that, it had to be like actual syntax that right. deploy this service at this time. Right. So there was a syntactic sugar that had to be there. You had to follow a particular way of writing. Then only it could understand. But how I feel is that because of this very nice generalization that has been done. you can now provide any type of input and it would interpret it yeah. into something which is actionable so now this would revolutionize so many things and now obviously people and obviously few years back everyone thinking like everyone was thinking voice search is the next thing or voice interface now that's gone people would like to type 100% no one's going to say a lot of stuff now because now you need very detailed prompts unless that becomes substantially contextual and it's so interesting because now i can think of so many applications which which were now it seems like far ahead of their time now it would start uh, basically gaining traction one of them definitely chat ops uh, yeah. would would grow substantially larger and take us in a tech documentation uh, uh, making them learn on our basically legacy source code and what not right yeah. now even if an old timer leaves the organization you can just train your chat gpt and ask him questions hey how does this code work it will spit out <laughs> <laughs> and there is one magic in here which is yeah. you know previously if you had to train a model mm. you need to collect a lot of supervised data mm. that is this is the input this is the output that is how you had to but with uh, gen- uh, generative ai especially large language models you don't need any training data if you have a sentence you can split the sentence and next word is basically the training pattern input mm. is this next word is that so you made it such that you can train a large language model with the, no supervision at all you just take the text and your training objective is predict the next word you already know that that's the magic that happens which is training at large scale and one thing i love about ai is like how the entire domain is evolving exactly how we think like even the even the even the initial set of examples that you provided or basically that you gave were all how we operate as humans how we learn as kids and, and that's exactly what is happening the way you explained about tokens that's exactly how we think yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> and that's exactly how we even communicate like it is happening very quickly that's why we don't understand it but if yeah, someone yeah. Uh, if someone is speaking in a language that is non native you can clearly see that person trying to find hey what's the next best word i can put in then and then True. the next best and then the next best over time that becomes your muscle that becomes your core memory or the muscle memory or that or the path becomes full of lipids <laughs> in your brain so that you don't have to think more when you are speaking but it True. all comes on like this the probabilities of picking Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all basic maths. All like all twelve standard maths, like up until twelve, whatever is studied, it's all right here in action. Right. Great. Okay. Uh, we 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 basically discuss quite a bit. Takes basically first of all, thank you so much for that. I have one one last question for you. Like, right. what are you most excited about? Like, you started generative AI because when that term was not even coined, you started doing it back then. Super meme question. Question was the first thing that I saw of yours. Uh, since then a lot of things have changed you know this domain basically you know this domain better than most folks out there what's your take on it what are you most excited about hmm. i think every day it's evolving to the point that it's hard to catch up for even someone who is full time on this someone like me but definitely i think multi model ai which is 
combining text with images with voice that's i think is one of the most exciting thing for example if gpt was let's say gpt3 or gpt4 that's coming out is trained on mix of images text videos and everything and if something can go from text to video or text to image uh, even deeper uh, that gets more exciting right so uh, direct multimodality combination of these things uh, speech text images uh, voice uh, that's one of the most exciting thing for me and beyond that i mean i want to probably build interfaces on top of this as i am currently working on the apps fourth company <laughs> i don't i really don't want to start anything probably i want to add uh because already it gets overwhelming with three yeah, yeah it does it does but i'm uh, really like you 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 have this knack of basically figuring out like when something works you have a knack of basically building a product around it and i so admire you for that like this is one thing that i've learned from you explicitly okay, okay this is what i have to remember how to productize something and you you have that brilliant knack oh thank you but uh, that's great like that basically multimodal ai sounds quite fancy but yeah we are now living in future now the entire world is now a big science fiction like we don't know what what open ai especially has in store for us what google has next because obviously google yeah. is also behind this but uh, it's fun nice anything else you would want to add uh nothing much i mean exciting times and it's to the point that you know disruption is happening at scale that we could not even fathom or imagine so while we are very, chatting someone is building something fancier <laughs> exactly like the the chat officially there is no api for chat gpt Hmm. and people have already kind of replicated chat gpt with gpt3 itself building memory layers on top of it libraries nowadays if you just sleep and wake up for like 2 months there is a new library that's trending everyone in ai world knows and is using that but you are not aware that never happened before where only it took 1 and half to 2 years then that library is popular now you need to definitely know it but it's not the time yeah. true true something that happened in the world of javascript every day a new noun.js used to come up cat.js this.js coffee.js right so now that's happening with ai it's such an exciting time to be alive but yeah thanks thanks so much ramshti thanks so Absolutely. much for doing this we we we, we basically covered quite a few things a lot of things got clear in my head i now know something that i can now talk about few things but i'll definitely one thing for sure i'll definitely be training my own version of chat gpt to do something i it's yeah. it would be my hello world but uh, thanks for uh, pointing that out on that official resource from open ai thanks thanks for that but uh, yeah. thanks so much for doing this it really was a fabulous thing like it was an amazing discussion learned a lot thanks so much thank you thank you for hosting me it's my pleasure to be on here thank you